Hello ladies and gents and welcome to another fabulous fun week of English 410. We are in week six. Can you believe it? We're like halfway through the quarter. Congratulations. It's exciting. Um, this week we are working on our annotated bibliography. Uh, this may be a familiar assignment for you if you've been through uh, English 102 or English 235. I think both of those courses typically require an annotated bibliography. Um, if you're not familiar, hooray, here's a great learning opportunity. Uh, annotated bibliographies are basically a journal of the research you found on a certain topic. Annotated bibliography sounds exciting, but like it's, it's like a research journal. Um, the title, Annotated Bibliography, comes from the two pieces of information that you need to include for each source. A bibliography is just a fancy word for a citation, and an annotation is a shortened summary or paraphrase of a larger thing, in this case an article or a website. So you're going to be including a citation and a short paragraph about that source, to create your annotated bibliography. You're going to do that for every source you use. You have to use a couple. Uh, it'll be exciting and fun. So let's take a look at that assignment here, and then we'll talk about some of the details. So you're going to be writing an annotated bibliography on the topic of your MIR report. Um, so hopefully last week you got some time to identify what topics you might be interested in. You did a little bit of research onto those topics to see if they were plausible, all that good stuff. Uh, and now we are going to be going to websites, CBC databases, all that good stuff to find resources that'll then back up your ideas in the MIR document. Just like so many of our assignments in this class, this annotated bibliography is building into your MIR document. So while you're like, oh, I have to include 10 sources, it's going to be really big. Uh, it is big. But it is also a required part of your MIR document. So by the time you get to the MIR and you're like, I have to write like 20, 30 pages for this. Well, lots of it is going to be coming from stuff you've already written, like your annotated bibliography, 10 sources. That's going to take up like six pages of that document. So like we're slowly whittling away at that large thing we're creating at the end. So the annotated bibliography is going to be a big part of that. Um, so I do have a template for you that shows you how annotated bibliographies look, how they function, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure you check that out. I also have resources on how to find sources for the annotated bibliography. Um, I will say as a caveat right off the bat, uh, research is typically time consuming. I wish that there was like an easy, fast way to do research that I could tell you, be like, here's an insider tip. Uh, it doesn't take any time if you do step one, two, and three. Um, unfortunately, research is just time heavy. But one thing you can do to make it less time heavy, if you wish, is to make an appointment with the CBC librarians. Uh, I will get us there real quick. If you go to our website and you type in CBC and then just backslash library, or you can type it into the search engine, but like this feels like it's faster. It takes you to the library homepage. Um, you can start your search here in just the OneSearch directory, type in your keywords and start from there. Just see what comes up. Um, the thing I will say about the CBC library databases is it's not Google. It uses a different algorithm to find things. So in Google, you could type in like a whole sentence if you needed to, and Google would still spit out results that were helpful. Uh, what the databases do is they look for keywords. So don't write a full sentence. Don't put a whole big bunch of phrases in there. You would want to look for keywords associated with your topic. So uh, if you were looking for marketing in local symphonies or something like that, you would click full text. You would type in marketing and symphony uh, and see what comes up. Uh, the AND in all caps I used is called a Boolean operator. It helps limit things. So once you get into the website databases like EBSCOhost, you don't need to include the ands here. You can just create separate lines because the Boolean operators are already located here for you. You can use and, or, or not to help either expand or narrow your database searches. So I could do marketing and symphony uh, and you know, local or something like that. Uh, and then I click search, see what comes up. 
I wouldn't type a whole sentence that said marketing at the level of the local symphony or something like that. That's that's too many words. But if you break it down into small words like this, uh, that'll help you out. And we still get like 64,000 results, which is too many. So what I like to do is kind of just scroll through the first page and see if anything is even like in the market of what I'm looking for. Uh, if it does look like I'm kind of headed in a good direction, like marketing on a shoestring budget, that sounds like something a local symphony would have to deal with. Uh, I'll check that out and I can take a look at it. Um, but another way that you could narrow things down is by all of our options in this left-hand margin. For instance, I don't need data from 1872. That doesn't seem like it would be helpful. I don't think their marketing strategies back then are probably the same as the ones we're using now. So I would pull this up a little bit more recently, right? Like, since the computer and the internet were invented would be good. Uh, so, so we can narrow that down. Uh, oh yay, I got it down to 54,000. It's still huge, right? So the other ways you can do this, you can look at eBooks. If you don't want eBooks, cause like that's too big for this, look at magazines or newspapers. Uh, you probably don't need academic journals uh, because those are highly specific and the level that we're writing at with an MIR doesn't require peer-reviewed sources necessarily. Uh, so I would do, um, I'm going to take the ebooks off. I would do magazines, I would do news, um, and I would probably do trade publications just because um, maybe some symphonies are talking about their marketing. That would be a trade publication. So we'll check that out there. Um, <laughs> this looks like a delightful one, symphony for a broken orchestra. Um, lots of ways to work with uh, marketing there. You can also, and here's probably the most helpful thing, is the subject header here. Click here, click show more, and you'll get a whole box opening up things. So I want to look at business. Uh, I want to look at marketing. Market trends and analysis would be good. Arts and entertainment industries. Uh, company marketing practices. These all will tell us about what kind of terms we should be searching for. Um, so click the ones that you think are best going to fit your topic. Advertising, marketing, and public relations. That sounds good, right? Um, and I'm just going to click update for fun. I don't need to look through them all because I'm not writing the MIR right now. But this will help us. gets us down to 5,000. You can scroll through here and see if any of this is going to work for you. Um, another delightful thing is this chat with a librarian feature. If you click on this, it will connect you to a librarian who's available somewhere in the world, or North America mostly, uh, some in Europe, if you're very lucky, you might get a European one. Uh, it will connect you with a librarian who can then help you with this process. The librarians, in order to have the job that they have, have to at least get a master's degree in library science a master's degree in looking up stuff in databases. Like they're so good at this, it's ridiculous. Uh, what would take me, and I'm a professional who looks things up for research purposes, a lot. Like that's a thing that I have to do for my job. I do it a lot. And I would like to think of myself as pretty good at it. What would take me an hour to find will take them five minutes to find. They're so very good at their job. So if you're thinking in terms of like, cost benefit analysis of like, okay, I have an hour to get stuff done. I need to find some research. What is the most effective way to use my hour? The answer is talk to the librarians. They will help you use that time very effectively because they'll help you find the search terms you need. They'll direct you to the right databases. If something's not available in full text, they can find it for you. Like they are absolute wizards at this. Like they're amazing. So please use that resource because research is very time intensive. This will be your best friend. Ask a librarian, yes, absolutely do, as you're trying to find your sources. It will save you just oodles of time. So do that. That is my best tip for success in this annotated bibliography assignment, is talk to a librarian, show them the prompt for the MIR document, tell them about your topic, and they will be able to help you find what you need to be successful. Um, so your annotation paragraphs, you're going to have your APA citation format. And then we've got an example here that's color coded for you. You will have a paragraph after that summarizes what the article is about. That will give a quotation that you might want to use in your MIR document. You don't have to use it, but like something you think might be useful. 
and then um, a reflection on how this article might be helpful as you write that document. So lots of good examples here so you can see exactly how this is going to look in your annotated bibliography. Uh, the last thing I'll tell you about the CBC Library databases, a thing that I love about them, is that you can go over to the right-hand margin and click on the Cite button if you find an article here. Click that Cite button, select APA Format 7th Edition. Uh, it will give you all the details, so you make sure that, yeah, that's the one I want. Uh, and then you just copy and paste this into your document. It saves so much freaking time, guys. So uh, if you find your sources in the CBC databases, the citations are created for you, which is awesome. So you would still need to format through your annotated bibliography because annotated bibliographies are alphabetized and they have hanging indents. So you're going to want to make sure that that's still happening. But the basic bones of the citation are here for you, um, which will be hugely time saving. So yay! Um, and you need 10 sources. So you'll be spending some time in the CBC Library databases. You can find them on Google as well. You'll have to create your own citations and maybe briefly discuss how you know it's still a reliable source, even though it didn't come from a vetted research database like the CBC Library ones. Um, note that at least two sources should be conceptual models or theoretical models. Um, so make sure that you're finding those visual components as well, because your MIR document will need visual components. This is a great place to start collecting those. Um, so yay, that is our big assignment for the week, this annotated bibliography. Hugely helpful um, to work with the librarians. You're going to be um, working on the annotated bibliography all of this week. And then next week, you're working on an assignment called the Review of Sources. And the Review of Sources builds on the annotated bibliography. You cannot complete the Review of Sources unless you have completed the annotated bibliography. So please take the time to do this in the order that we have right now, because um, that's gonna be essential. We do have our APA format guides here to help you out. You've got your APA format book, which will also help you out. And then I also have sample annotated bibliographies located for you here in the modules tab. There are three to help you out. So please take a look at those three documents Orient yourself to how they're created, what structure they're using, what kind of things they're including in the annotation paragraphs, and I think you'll have all the tools you need to be successful here. I look forward to seeing what you guys create. Have a fabulous day. Soak in a little bit of the sunshine that we're getting this happy Monday morning, and let me know if you have any questions.